3 with this is Salvation and Dragon Age Origins. I will go now. With Alistair, yes. Sten, yes. Liliana. Indeed. Why, actually? Doesn't matter. Vashadan. No, I want you actually. Yes. Um, and we are going to Circus Pass. Yes. Please, 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 please. Don't be anything other than that what I want. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. All right. Since we're being a nice person, seems that since that seems to be conveniently yeah, on our way, we'll follow her. Since trouble does seem to follow us on our way. All right. Shield defense. No. Since trouble does seems to follow us on our way. Trap. Where is that trap? I don't see it. It is begun. It's a trap. <laughs> I can't. Damn. <laughs> oh, you can always try. So you say. That is a mage. Ah. How do I mark all? That is just not the key on my keyboard. No, don't hold. He's approaching. Right, why not? You know what? It is done. Bye. You're next. Alright, Sten, you are more fragile than I thought. No, I don't want to loot the bleeding flower. And now I'll go before I talk to anyone. 
Oh, doesn't matter. You, the traps are gone after the conversation. The Elven assassin is wounded and unconscious but alive. You could tie him up and talk to him if you wished. No, let's mm. do that. Oh, what? I... Oh. Oh, I rather thought I would wake up dead. Or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. That could easily be rectified. Of that, I have no doubt. You are most skilled. If you haven't killed me, however, you must have kept me alive for some purpose, yes? You seem awfully glib for a prisoner. <laughs> it is my way, or so I am told. Let's see then. I assume you kept me alive to ask me some questions, yes? If so, let me save you time and get right to the point. My name is Zevral. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. I'm rather happy you failed. So would I be, in your shoes. <laughs> for me, however, it sets a rather poor precedent, doesn't it? Getting captured by a target seems a tad detrimental to one's budding assassin career. Too bad for you, then. Yes, it's true. Too bad for me. What are the Antivan Crows? An order of assassins, of course, out of Antiva. I suppose you wouldn't hear much of them out here, but where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not be not for being good assassins, I see. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldens do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. You came all the way from Antiva. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The Crows get around, you see. Who hired you to kill us? A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. Does that mean you're loyal to Logan? I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. And now that you failed the service? Oh, well, that's between Logan and the crows. And between the crows and myself. And between you and me. Isn't that what we're establishing now? How much were you paid? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Then why are you one? Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, <laughs> I tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. Thanks, I'll take that under advisement. You seem like a bright girl. I'm sure you have other options. When were you to see him next? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the crows would have informed your Logan of the results. If he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead. Or I should be, at least, as far as the crows are concerned. No need to see Logan then. If you had failed? What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> No, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Why are you telling me all this? <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Aren't you at least loyal to your employers? Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. I'm listening. Make it quick. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So let me serve you instead. Can I expect the same amount of loyalty from you? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing. 
In which case, I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. What's to stop you from finishing the job later? To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Won't they come after you? Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? You must think I'm royally stupid. I think you're royally tough to kill and utterly gorgeous. Not that I think you'll respond to simple flattery, but there are worse things in life than serving the whims of a deadly sex goddess. What do you want in return? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice and would make me marginally more useful to you. <laughs> and somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I'm yours. Is that fair? Why would I want your service? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. I could also warn you should the Antivan crows attempt something more sophisticated now that my attempts have failed. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? Uh, no. <laughs> I like a woman who knows exactly what she wants. I really do. So, what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. Very well, I accept your offer. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Don't worry about it, we could use him. Hmm. All right, all right, I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. <laughs> I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Very well. Now here is the deal, my friends. Vashadan. Yes. Um, Zevran is an interesting character and I like having him around. Because he actually, um, if you build him right, he's actually quite useful. And I like playing with two rogues. I also like playing with, I, I actually I like playing with two mages more than that. But the thing is, the two mages I have, well, one of them will be constantly disagreeing with me. And that is just the, a little bit annoying and therefore I won't do it. So I won't have two mages with me at any one time which uh, again means that I will have to have two of another class and that's just in that case that'll be that'll be um, a rogue since the wolf is stuck at any rate I can just as well release it and while I recover from that spell I can see if I have any good clothing for Zevran Yep. Actually, no! And... You are carrying a sword and dagger, why not? Why not? I would have put two daggers on you, but... Mine is for attack and his is... Uh, okay, yes. And tactics-wise... Must you? Well, aren't you friendly? Um, <laughs> really? All right. Um, that uh, what? Uh, uh, so getting Severn early is a good idea generally, and 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 Redcliffe isn't. Okay. Um, Tactics-wise, you don't have what I want in the first slot yet. Do you have momentum? Do you have momentum yet? Mm-hmm, you do. That means 
in that case self any momentum do you have mark of death yet Yes, also that means enemy. Enemy rank, elite or higher. New will. Use that. That is a bit of a tricky line because that may make um, cause him to run for a target that isn't being tanked yet, but with a little bit of looking after him that should be fine. So then self, health below 75% uh, mark of death do you have whirlwind already? nope but you have dual sweep um, self surrounded by enemies by at least three dual weapon sweep Let's keep it that way for the moment. But backstab feels like a waste on something that isn't an elite. As you like. What? I didn't mean to control you. I want to control you. And are you going alone now or what? <laughs> Alright, here we are in Honleyeth. Or not even in... We are on Sarkos Pass as it were. We are collecting all the elf fruit we can. What is that X? Fallen tree blocked. Okay. Uh, you'll have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people traveling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now what do I do? Are you asking me to find your mule? Oh, no, no, no. I sent the elf to do that. I wouldn't dream of asking a stranger to do it. Allow me to introduce myself, Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur, at your service. I'm Sigan, pleased to meet you. I don't normally take this route, but with the war I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you'd consider helping a fellow out? Help a fellow out how? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But, uh, maybe you could? What's the catch? The catch? Uh, yeah, I, uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. <laughs> it's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even if I could get down there, which I can't, <laughs> I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types mm -hmm. like yourself, surely? Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. How much do you want for it? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. I've paid too much to simply throw it away. What does the control rod do? The dwarf I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? Yes, I think I could use it. Just as well. As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleith. I'll mark Honleith. it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulaf Gar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. And if it doesn't? Maybe you could look up the fellow who owned the golem before. If he's still about, that is. <laughs> Best of luck to you then. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. Bye. Um... So, why can't I travel at this time? That's just not right. Very well. No, I'm an idiot. 
So, back again. This time I hit the right key. <laughs> the blight. How will you end it? We have to fight the archdemon. Is that all? It is surrounded by an ocean of darkspawn. How will you reach it? If you reach it, how will you slay it? You say you are a Grey Warden. I have heard stories of this order. What have you heard? Great strategists and peerless warriors. That is what we hear of the Wardens. So far, I am not impressed. I'm not here to impress you. Evidently not. It remains only to see what you are here for. Actually, I'm starting to think you just have to show you've got a backbone to that guy. Let me talk to all of them a bit. I only have ten minutes left and I think I spent them in time here. Yes. Time here. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Actually, never mind. Very well. Let's go. As you wish. Morgan. I await your command. I'd like to ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Never mind. I'll ask her later about the shape changing thing because she I think she would hold it against me if I were to Yeah. I have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? My hair, thank you. It's very nice and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orle. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Dear Maker. Yes, you can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. And here you can start the romance with her, which I won't, of course. Well, we are friends, aren't we? Yes. Very much so. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. You are a treasured friend, Liliana. Thank you. I am honored that you feel that way. I don't think she has got the wrong idea. She can get that very easily, but I don't think I said anything to inspire that, so I won't go that way. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden until much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Do you remember nothing of your mother? Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. Well, that's she the kept flowers dried flowers in. in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk a bit to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Do you miss anything about Orle? I miss Val Royaux. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Val Royaux was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royaux, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses. 
and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Ozama is magnificent too. Yes, I'm sure it is. But every city has a different personality. It is hard to describe. You have to be there. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orle, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. What sorts of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orle is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes... Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. <laughs> What's so special about shoes? Well, they're... they're shoes. They're pretty. Some of them anyway. When I left Orle, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hard to walk in? I wouldn't want to run in it, or have to enter battle, but for lounging in a lady's sitting room? Perfect. The shoes <laughs> made in Orle were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Yeah, just look at them. At least they keep the cold out. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? <laughs> something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? I heard that in Olé, minstrels are often spies. Where did you hear this? Someone told me this a long time ago. And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are... are what we call bards. What's the difference? Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably, but to do so in Orle would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Patron? What sort of patron? In Orle, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite, and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. You are a bard, weren't you? I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. So that's why you learned learn to fight with like that? My skills served me well. But the day finally came when I decided to just put them aside. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Nothing, never mind. Something I can help with? Can you teach me to be a bard? Mm, that's an idea. I watch you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others. For safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. So that is how you unlock the Bard Specialization, which will be my secondary specialization later. Did I talk to Alistair at all? No, I don't think I did yet. And what does my timer say? You know, 
Maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. <laughs> this wouldn't be some former lover of your your lover of yours, would it? <laughs> A former what? <laughs> no. Do you honestly think I would suggest we go see together? No. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. Have you contacted her? Wait, that's wonderful news, actually. It would be. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. If you want to, we could try. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. All right. I'll save you because my timer rang the moment I asked about it. This was Savasha and Dragon Age Origins, Bovite.